if you're already rendering. Hi, okay, first of all, can, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and is there any peripheral noise going on? I have heater going on. If you can hear it, I can turn it off. If you can just hear me, that's fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. I don't hear. Good, anything. good, good. That's brilliant. Okay. So, um, I'm always really grateful. I probably say this every time I come on to be able to have an opportunity to talk about um, permaculture, mental health, and um, it's something that I really would like to um, promote. Um, use it for you know people to use um, for me personally uh, I have suffered with anxiety um, and depression for a very very long time um, I think I perhaps first recognized it more when I was in my teens didn't know what it was at the time and the older I've got these you know things have happened to me in my life and now uh, about a year or so ago, I discovered I was an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person, or the medical term is sensory processing sensitivity. It explains an awful lot for me. Um, and I think it's great, actually, that um, although I should have been on before you, Zoe, I've come on afterwards to hear about all these different connections to our bodiless food. Um, permaculture is a natural design science and which looks at nature so I think it's really appropriate that we look at the connection between um, our bodies um, and what we eat from from the earth um, so and that I would like to put into what I would consider perhaps one of a, a permaculture toolkit what we eat and how we eat and how it affects us um, but for me personally I found permaculture um, has really helped me evolve um, to become the person I am now so I just would love to share and this is why I'm doing these sessions the tools and techniques that I use and how I understand these processes um, so my plan for um, the next few sessions that I will hopefully do here is to go through um, principles some of the principles within permaculture not necessarily um, the well-known 12 perma uh, permaculture principles by David Holmgren but 12 that um, I just think perhaps uh, appropriately fit what I'm trying to show you so um, I'm just gonna share um, a slideshow with you. So please bear with me while I, I'm assuming I can do that, Sophie. Yeah, can I share the screen? Um, Rakesh is the host, but yeah, he can give you permission. Thank you, Rakesh, appreciate that. Okay, so for me, I think anything we experience with in the mind or the body or if you like, is about telling a story. So I'd like to share a story with you, which I've started to do today, of how permaculture has helped me and some of the experiences and the things I talk about, I'm sorry, the things I talk about are like um, are my experiences here. So, <clears throat> right. Okay, my keypad is playing up again. So bear with me, there we go. Um, so today, um, I'd like to talk about work with nature, permaculture principle of working with nature and how our natural processes and our natural patterns of behavior can help us overcome adversity, can help, help us overcome the challenges that we face um, within mental health. Um, and especially more at the moment with the things that we've, we've experienced with COVID um, and climate change. And a lot of these things I know personally are making me feel like there is no hope um, and how do I keep on going? And I have found permaculture to, to really help me go down that journey and down that road of finding ways to keep going. So in, I found by looking at my own patterns of behavior um, and who I am and learning more about myself, I've learned to um, let things that I feel are painful and uh, the fear, I've let it become part of what I would call my abundance. 
So letting pain, I think, become part of our abundance rather than avoiding it and wanting to have um, distraction techniques um, and perhaps working all the time, you know, like if we, if we have a situation where we're working all the time and um, as a way to actually distract us from what we're actually thinking and feeling, um, I think um, defeats the object. Is about like we were talking about food and, you know, um, sometimes we you know we do certain things that end up with um our behavior getting the balance of becoming angry perhaps so i think trying to understand who we are and looking at the natural processes within ourselves and remembering that we are part of nature um well not part of nature sorry we are nature um is really important so letting pain become part of um our abundance i think can be really is really important and it's not easy um my personal experience is that i haven't really learned to do that until recently and i've always tried to avoid it and always tried to push it to one side i like to be kept busy you know working whatever um but the moment i started to actually just sit with challenges and anxiety and let it i guess consuming and being an hsp i really feel things quite deeply so I feel things really physically in my body, so it becomes even more overwhelming than perhaps other people I might know. But what I've learned to do is to sit with that pain, um, try to understand it. I've looked at my own reactions to that and what my innate patterns might be. Um, and from that, I've learned to develop um, and, and myself and grow. So learning to, I guess, step the other side of that pain and that fear. Um, but also <laughs> the major thing that really helps me to do that is understanding what permaculture is, what I've learned as part of um, the processes I've gone for, you know, doing my PDC and, and just the daily practices that I have. So understanding that Permaculture is about recognizing nature and looking around us, what does nature do? Nature, we were talking about balance and nature finds a, a, the balance within us. So if we could all do what I think we naturally need to do and that's go to sleep in the winter, I think that would be brilliant. But our world is set up so that we can't do that. Um, we have this fast paced society where we have to, you know, the demand is we get up, we go to work, we have to make money, you know, just so we can have a roof over our heads, so we can have food in our bellies. We do not have the time and the processes to follow our natural patterns of behavior, what is naturally intrinsic to us. And no matter what we do and where we go, those processes will always be there. We can never get away from the basic. Um, human processes they will always always be there and i think this is what we're constantly fighting and doing with ourselves is um you know what our culture tells us we have to have this we have to have that we have to look this way um and then i think we're constantly fighting those challenges i know i i'm less so now but i think i you know personally i think i very much do um and learning to be resilient even when we are experienced past trauma um, is one of the hardest things I think to do and so to then go deep within ourselves and find that inner core and that inner sense of being able to grow how do we do that um, so a lot of the things uh, process I do when I come on these sessions is I like to do a little bit of a, a process a bit of an activity and I would like to invite you to do that today you Please don't feel you have to, but if you feel you can, I've for just for a short while, well, a short moment, I'll just um, check my check the time on my phone. For about five minutes, I'd like us, five, 10 minutes perhaps, I'd like us together to share a process of thinking about something painful. So in the past, I've asked you to um, just think about a particular um, process and tell us about um, a story from that. So I'm not asking necessarily for any feedback from this. What I'm asking you to do, if you feel you can go to this place, and I know we're all in a safe place here, is to, something that, to think of something that's painful to you. And rather than when you think of that thing, rather than blocking it off 
or finding some distraction of getting up and going to the toilet or going to do something else, I invite you to actually sit with it and experience what's happening to your body, experience the thought processes that are happening to you and just, just feel, feel that experience. And I'd like you to breathe into it so we can do a bit of a breathing exercise with this. So I invite you to let it in and then I'd like you to think about when we come out of it, what you've, what you've felt and what you've recognized within your body and what processes you might have wanted to instinctively use to help you um, overcome that particular pain. So if you feel, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for a moment so we can all be together properly. So if you feel that you would like to do this activity, I invite you to sit now and share with me this safe space and to sit relaxed with your feet on the ground and as comfortable as possible. And just to press your feet gently to the ground as if you're really trying to connect and root yourself. And please feel free to close your eyes if you want to do this. To root yourself into the ground. And then to take a deep breath in. The count of four. So together we do this. One, two, three, four. And then hold it for two. And then breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. I'd like you to let yourself just relax and sit and be and think something that causes you pain and just to feel that in your body. And where do you feel it? What does it feel like? I'd like you to think about where that was in your body. What reactions you might have got? Did you feel it in your stomach? Did you feel it in your chest? Do you feel it anywhere else? And what does it feel like to, to let that come in? Does it feel intrusive? And then I'd like to let you, I'd like to invite you to think about the natural processes of nature. And thinking about that particular painful situation I then like you to think about the trees. Simply the trees, perhaps doesn't sound very exciting, but think about what they do. They are rooted into the ground. They are strong. 
their branches go up to the sky. They capture the wind, they capture the sun. But no matter what they do, they always follow the seasons and stay committed to the processes, no matter whether it's the wind, whether it's a storm, they stay strong and steadfast. And this is just a technique that I use and I forget about this technique. So for a moment, I'm just gonna let you just think about a process in nature that no matter what happens, that process always, always happens. So coming back together now. And just thinking about your experience. And then what that may have felt like in your body, where you felt it, but then thinking how nature, no matter what, she keeps going. And this is just an example of what I find really helpful, even when going through a really difficult situation. So uh, for example, going through past trauma, and it can be really easy to, um, I guess, become ungrounded, to be in our heads, to not be able to focus properly, to be in survival brain. Um, and if we just take a look at what goes on around us, the trees, the birds are always singing, the trees are always putting on buds, the leaves always come out, and then they fall again in the autumn and in the winter the trees just rest and I think it's so easy to forget that we are disconnected sorry that we are connected but I think we be, we have become very disconnected so it's a really simple I think it's a really simple activity when we are feeling um, in the worst possible place, no matter what we're going through. And it's really tough. It can be so, so tough to try to pull ourselves back so that we can feel grounded. Um, and that, you know, I, I'm terrible at it. I'm really, really terrible at grounding myself. But there'll just be a moment when I'll look out my window. And in fact, I, I try to make a point of doing it as often as I can. And I actually realise that the trees um, are always there doing their thing um, and the birds are singing. They never falter, they stay committed, they stay true to themselves. And that really helps me and that reminds me um, that the world is such a bigger, bigger place than myself and how I can learn to actually just connect with everything and realize what's around me. So it doesn't sound perhaps very, um, very magical or anything but it's really simple um, just to be connected and to help us work with nature and to work with our natural um, innate abilities to actually connect and understand that 
there are processes that we can use to help us ground ourselves and to keep the cycle going and to be committed. And if we can learn to let in pain and look at it as an, part of our abundance, we can actually grow from it. So I just, I believe I've only got a few minutes left. So I'll just share one last thing on the slide with you. Okay. Okay. So if we just look at nature and how she works and the birds and the trees, and they are committed to the seasons and they don't falter. Their songs feed our souls and their oxygen gives us life. So look at your patterns of behavior, work with your innate abilities. Don't change them if they feel right for you and stay true and committed to yourself through the fear and the pain, no matter what. And it's hard, it can be really hard. And I bring my session to a close. Thank you so much, Wendelin. Thank you for holding that space for us. That was really beautiful and really powerful exercise. Um, I was a bit tired actually, so I'm glad that I was able to, uh, to, to share that with you. Yeah, no, I felt really held in that moment. I really appreciate you sharing that and sharing so, um, yeah, honestly about your own journey. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Are there any questions or comments anyone would like to make in the last minute before we have a break? Or are you ready to go for the break? Okay, so thank let's you. Take a break. Thank you again, Wendelin. And we'll come back in 10 minutes with Rakesh's session.